uh, i hope you can see the screen right uh, uh, yes we are able yes. to see your screen then yes uh, so uh, yeah thanks once again sir for the, the opportunity so uh, i am planning to conduct this as a workshop uh, where uh, whether if if you uh, have the converge uh, license uh, and the software you could do it along with me and uh, the thing is uh, we have con uh, we have uh, segregated or we have scheduled this particular workshop into uh, this particular sessions into two parts in the initial phase i will be explaining about what are the diff uh, ic engine parts the different parameters that are included in an ic engine and then we go into doing a very simple case setup okay so the simple case setup means uh, we will be con conducting a cfd analysis on a backward facing step so the purpose of doing that particular challenge is to give you an idea of how the software works so i i think many of you have not heard of this particular software many might have heard it but but the thing is actually uh, these are uh, paid softwares so so uh, the accessibility to these softwares might be very limited so uh, the thing is uh, you can ask any questions regarding this particular uh, software or regarding the the concepts that are taught in between uh, but but i would recommend you to ask these questions in the in the q and a sections um, so uh, now going to the part so we are going to uh, the workshop name itself is cft analysis of ic engines right so uh, what do you mean by this cft analysis CFT analysis is nothing but the analyzing, uh, so uh, analyzing the uh, the different experiment using numerically, or or in simple words, we can say that we uh, the design engineers are designing certain parts in a certain components in all the industries. Okay, so the, whenever the design engineers are creating uh, the the different components uh, which is required to their industry. Um, we have to uh, cross verify whether this model works in 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 in, uh, in uh, real time simulations situations. So there are different type of testing these cases. We can do uh, either a, a experimental setup, or we can do analytical setups, or we we can also go for uh, numerical setups. So to understand this uh, or to verify the whether the design is optimal or not, we make use of this. A numerical simulations which is also called as cft and the cft stands for computational fluid dynamics so as the name suggests it is the study of fluid so cft deals with the study of fluid flow and in this particular uh, analysis the fluid flow is uh, the main uh, part and we are going to understand this and coming to the industrial part, most of the uh, industrial components like turbines, pump, be it uh, automotive vehicles uh, industry, there are also there are many many uh, uh, many area where fluid is taking into account. So whenever we are considering this concept, the CFT is also a uh, playing a very big role in industry. So it's always good that you know the CFT analysis, and also it's always good that you know the different packages in the uh, you packages using the CFT. Okay, so uh, this particular uh, software that we are working on is the Converse CFT, which is a paid software, as I said. But the Converse software is very beneficial for uh, for uh, industrial purpose also. Uh, we, from my personal uh, understanding, is that uh, this. Converge is been used for the F1 racing companies like Red Bull as well as the Aston Martin. So uh, the thing is, um, why they are using it because of the good accuracy and the the easiness of using this particular software. Okay, so uh, since uh, the time is very limited, uh, we have to wind up this particular session in eight thirty, and the contents are also very big. So I'll I'll start with uh, the content. So in the first part, I want you to understand what are the fundamentals of IC engines, the, the basics behind the CFT and the, the main features of Converge. So I assume that uh, you might be having some partial or uh, initial understanding of what is uh, uh, an ANSYS software, or uh, these are all the analysis software. So many of you might have some understanding of what is ANSYS and all. 
and uh, so uh, compared to other packages cf free or convert software is having some some uh, benefits so these benefits we are going to learn in the in this part itself okay and we are going to do a basic a setup of a backward flowing step uh, flow through a backward flowing step and uh, do the analysis okay so coming to the part so the initial part will be regarding the the ic engines uh, or what do you mean by an ic engines okay so ic engine is, is uh, nothing but it is a uh, engine and what what we are doing is we are trying to produce energy or we are trying to convert the chemical energy of the fuel into a mechanical work that is the very basic uh, work that we say so how is it done so we can say that in an ic engines there might be pistons there might be different uh, uh, the, the the connecting rods and many things are there so there we always inject some fuel into these ic engines and then because the fuel is injected and when we ignite it the fuel will burn and that particular part uh, the, the combustion is going to happen and this combustion can produce work okay and this is the basics of the ic engines so uh, so usually we make use of the hydrocarbons for producing the energy and but in the current scenario there are other engines like uh, the hydrogen engines are also being used there and uh, and uh, generally ic engines can be classified as reciprocating engines as well as rotary engines okay so reciprocating engines it is uh, so we can go with the rotary engines we might not have heard much of it so in the, the rotary engines are nothing but uh, the, the cylinders are arranged radially okay so there is be a, a cylinder in, in there will be a cylinder and uh, the cylinders will be arranged radially to it and uh, there will be a stationary crankshaft to it okay so this is how the the, the rotary engine works like so they will be having a rotating body and uh, and uh, this is a, a wangle engine and uh, this is also used but in a very bare minimum way so the most common type of engines that are used is the the, the uh, ic engines are the reciprocating engines and in the reciprocating engines itself uh, which we can easily see in the in the automobile industry most of the uh, new vehicles are all working based on the reciprocating engines okay so uh, these engines can be further divided into two cases which is nothing but the spark ignition engines and the compression ignition engines so in a spark ignition engines there will be a spark plug and the spark plug will create the combustion and which will cause the uh, the, the engine cylinder to move so here uh, we can say that it is a controlled combustion is going to happen here and in the there are basically four steps or uh, four different uh, uh, cycles are happening there okay there will be an intake stroke and in the intake stroke what happens is that the air fuel mixture is introduced into the cylinder and if you see here this is the cylinder and i believe most of you have have a uh, understanding of this no? uh, so uh yeah okay um sir uh, is there any uh, annotate options here or uh, we don't have... uh so daniel you can make use of the whiteboard uh right uh, so that um uh -huh. uh, you know you can explain the concept using whiteboard sure sure, sure. fine so uh, so if you see here uh maybe we can uh see that th there are actually two different uh, 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 the the there will be an inlet valve and an exit valve so this is the uh, this is where the fuel is getting injected and the this is where the fuel is emitted out so in between there will be four cycles happening the very first cycle is the intake cycle where the fuel is sucked into the into this particular chamber so this is called as the uh, the the cylinder of an engine engine cylinder okay so in between this particular area is the the combustion process is going to happen and uh, there uh, the in the compression process the air fuel mixture is compressed in the in the cylinder and this is at, at as this particular reaches the top dead center uh, this compression process is happened and soon after that the power stroke is created and because of the power stroke the the 
uh, cylinder will move down and the then the in the come in the exhaust part the fuel will be emitted out of it okay so these are the different parts of it there is a spark plug and in the spark plug you can see it at the mi middle of it and the air fuel mixture is emit is entered into this particular yellow colored passage and uh, the exhaust or the waste gas is removed through this particular passage okay so this is regarding the the, the very basic introduction to it and uh, we can say that uh, the, the SI engines, we usually make use of this petrol engine or uh, gasoline engines. And uh, because uh, we, we can have a controlled combustion, that means we can control the combustion if you are making use of the fuel like the gasolines. Okay, And because of that, we make use of this uh, uh, the, the gasoline as the, as the fuel for uh, uh, spark ignition engines. Okay, and the spark ignition engines usually operates on the principle of auto cycle, right? So coming to the next part is the CI engine, and uh, in the CI engine, uh, usually the the as the name suggests, because of the compression of the the because of the high compression, uh, the 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 fuel will get burned by itself, and this happens because of the uh, the uh, and we are not providing any particular. Uh, spark for igniting the fuel. If you are introducing any particular uh, uh, air inject, uh, the, the fuel injector to it, 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 it can cause uh, knocking or other issues. So this is the second type of engines. Uh, so coming to the, the very important certain parameters. So if you consider, see if this, this is a, a, a simple schematic diagram of a of a IC engine, a four-stroke IC engine, maybe we can say. So, uh, the the bore is nothing but the diameter of the engine, the the cylinder block. Okay, so we can say that the diameter of the inner cylinder block we can assume it to be the bore, and it is here written as B only. And then the next is the stroke. Stroke is nothing but the distance traveled. So if you see here, you can see that there is a, 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 a connecting road at, which is uh, attached to a camshaft tunnel, right? So whenever the piston which moves from the angle, this theta, when it moves from 0 to 180, we can say it to be a stroke. Similarly, when the whenever the piston moves from 1 to 360, we can say it to be the another stroke. Okay, so uh, that is regarding the stroke and connecting road length. So what is the connecting road length? The connecting road length is nothing but the, uh, the, the it connects the piston and the crankshaft. Okay, so connecting road is nothing but uh, a link that is connecting between the, uh, the piston road and the piston and the crankshaft is connected using a connecting or uh, the, it is denoted by the connecting road length. Okay, so coming to the next thing is the TDC and the BDC. Uh, whenever the cylinder reaches the very top part, we can assume it to, to be at the TDC or else we can say that whenever it is at theta degree, okay, whenever the crankshaft is at theta degree, we can assume it to be at uh, TDC. Okay, similarly, whenever it makes an angle of 360, we can say it to be at TDC. Similarly, Whenever the piston is at the very bottom, we can assume it to be at bottom dead center. Okay, so corresponding angle should always be 180 degree. Right. So, and the, the, the next thing is the swept volume. So, swept volume is nothing but the volume that is occupied in the cylinder. Okay, so the volume that is occupied in, 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 the, in the cylinder in a single stroke that that means if you see here the piston can move from tdc to bdc right so the space swept by the engine in a single stroke we can set to be a, a swept volume so this particular area in the below this tdc to this bdc we can set to be a swept volume okay and what is clearance volume? So whenever for a, for any IC engines, there might be some clearance volumes available. So the piston can move to up to this particular spot. 
after it reaches the tdc there there will always be some spaces present there and that particular volume that is present inside a, a engine cylinder is called as the clearance volume okay so and now the very important features that is required for understanding uh, the the engine uh, uh, the, the engine uh, performance we can say to be the the compression ratio so compression ratio is nothing but the total volume so what is the total volume that is here the total volume we can assume it to be the volume the piston moves from from the bdc to tdc and the clearance volume to the clearance volume so this particular compression ratio actually varies for different engines okay for a uh, for a petrol engine we assume it to be less than uh, 12 and for a diesel engine it's always greater than uh, 16 or 17 that is how the conventional system works so this compression ratio is very important whenever we are considering the engine uh, specifications right so coming to the four stroke engine si cycle we have already discussed it so in the initial time what happens is that the fuel is injected into the system and the the the, the piston will go down and in the second time what happens is that the fuel will get compressed and what happens when it compresses the temperature and the pressure inside that this particular area will go high okay and that particular stroke is called as compression stroke and hello yeah so uh, coming to the uh, compression stroke uh, after compression stroke the next will be our the power stroke in the power stroke what happens is that the fuel will burn the, the burning of the fuel happens in this power stroke okay at this particular area a high temperature or high high amount of energy is released out of this particular uh, is released in the in the cylinder head okay so and the next part is the exhaust stroke so i guess we have all learned this multiple times when we are learning uh, when we were doing our engineering uh, area or uh, other courses so uh, this is actually very basic things right and uh, coming to a little more the performance parameters so why why we why we need to uh, understand the performance parameters the performance parameters are parameters that are used to uh, identify how efficiently or how good the system is working okay so the very first uh, performance parameter we can say it to be the imep so it is nothing but the average pressure in the engine cylinder so it's nothing but a, a, a cylinder can go uh, it has a four uh, four stroke as i said now for a four stroke engine you can have four strokes so when it move four stroke there can be a average pressure in the first stroke there can be one pressure p1 in the second stroke there can be a second pressure p2 so when we take an average of it we can see it to be the imap or the average pressure okay and the next is the indicated power so indicated power is nothing but a theoretical power so we can say it to be in in, in small or simple words we can say that indicated power is a theoretical power that is produced inside a engine cylinder so once again i say it is the power that is generated inside a cylinder which cannot be derived so if if the fuel is burning some amount we get some power right so that power we can say to be the indicated power but the problem is we will not get this power when we try to obtain why because there are a lot of frictions and other losses happening okay so the power that is obtained in the engine cylinder is called as the indicated power okay so the the next is the brake power so the power that is obtained at the engine crankshaft is called as the brake power so the power that we can we get at the output or the measurable power that we are getting out at the output of the of an engine 
is called as the brake power in the case of a car we can say that in a car there will be some uh, 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 there will be some engine so in the same engine some fuel will be burnt it can produce maybe about 100 kilowatt of power just assume it's, a, it's a, just a number if it produce 100 kilowatt of power okay then at after it provides some of its energy to the shaft so there are different bearings and there are different systems inside a car i guess you all know that there are gearing systems and all so whenever these these systems work it tends to release a lot of energy to this particular system and the final power that is derived at the output of a shaft or at the end power that we are that is obtained for doing the useful work is called as the uh, brake power okay and coming to the mechanical efficiency this is always a good uh, understanding uh, it's nothing but the brake power divided by the indicated power okay so uh, the specific fuel consumption which means that how much fuel is required for uh, for uh, producing a, a, a unit power output okay so that is called as the specific fuel consumption lower the value of ssc the good will be the fuel property okay so this is actually the uh, uh, fuel uh, specific fuel consumption as nothing but the mass flow rate divided by the power that is derived okay so the another performance parameters that we can uh, use for the analysis is nothing but the air fuel ratio what is meant by air fuel ratio air fuel ratio is nothing but it is the air uh, the ratio of the air present inside it divided by the the fuel present inside it okay so usually for most of the engines uh, all engines actually the we have to supply a lot of air into it why we have to provide a lot of air into it because for a combustion to happen actually we have to pro uh, the, the for oxidations to happen uh, we we have to provide air for burning of fuels okay and usually for uh, si engines the air fuel ranges between 12 to 18 and for ca engines it ranges from 18 to 17 okay so the next is the fuel conversion efficiency and it is a dimensional parameter that is uh, that is used to relate the engine's eng output to the fuel flow okay so so it is is also another parameter which is used to relate what you are going to relate the the desired engine output we always have some desired engine output and we are comparing that to the the fuel flow okay that is con uh, denoted by the fuel conversion efficiency and volumetric efficiency is nothing but the volume flow rate of air into the intake system divided by rate of volume displacement okay so this is a uh, volumetric efficiency and why do we have to do this cft simulations that is the primary questions that we have to consider okay so the thing is even though we say that in a combustion process there will be uh, the the fuel uh, will combine with oxygen or air to form some sort of carbon dioxide or can also give nitrogen nitrogen or uh, h2o but in real cases, there can be a lot of emissions that can be accompanying this. Okay. So in normal cases, the complete combustion cannot happen. Either there can be excessive air happening into it or there can be excessive fuel getting into it. Whenever there is excessive fuel or excessive air getting into any engine by a small fraction itself, then it's not a complete combustion and it can also give a lot of emissions okay be it if you have a lot of air then you are emitting nox if you are a lot of uh, fuel that you are injecting into the system then we are emitting the zoot okay so and also we have to determine the engine reliability durability and all so also in the uh, in the uh, design team so whenever we are designing any particular engine okay so engine we can say that uh, uh, it contains many parts and they contains many parameters which are not dis uh, described here so these uh, we always wanted to have good performance in simple words we can say it to be a good efficiency a good power output so a low frictional forces 
so all these things we have to have uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to provide it okay so we have to make sure that the the engine is very good compared to the previous uh, case setup so also we have to reduce the emissions so if you remember uh, there was initially the bs12 now it comes to bs6 right so what happens after every every time they they renew their the emission norms we make sure that the emissions are the are limited to a great extent so how are we going to do that so that is done using the cft simulation we can do that using a cft simulations and it uh, cft simulations we can uh, the, it's very cost effective and also uh, these can give a good results okay so this is the reason why a uh, cft simulations are required and the the software that we are going to use is a convert cft uh, so i'll i'll give you uh, 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 first of all before we go into the convert cft features i'll have i'll, I'll show you the the basic interface of a convert cft software okay so uh, just uh, i guess uh, you can see the screen uh, yeah i guess uh, you can see the screen right so fine this is uh this is how the the converge window looks like okay and uh, to begin with uh, in a converge uh, this particular software that we are using for analysis is called as the converge studio and in the converge studio uh we are going to import the we are going to import the cat file into it then we do the geometry cleanup part, which is very essential for a CFT analysis. And then we do the case setup. Okay. So the since the time is very limited, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a brief idea of this. This particular part is called as the, the, the geometry deck in that we can repair any particular geometry, create, measure, all the things can be done. And a geometry the very one good feature of this converge is actually it is creating automated mesh so if you have experience of working with the softwares like open form or ansys fluent there we are we, we are saying that okay this is the mesh that we need here also we are defining that this is the size we need or this is this much refinement we need actually but the system will be generating the mesh by itself Okay, so how is it done? So it's done by the converge is having their own uh, the patented uh, versions of creating uh, high quality meshes. Okay, and that is the very best benefits of using converge for industrial applications. So now coming to the next thing, if this is the just interface of uh, of a converge studio. If you wanted to import any particular geometry into this particular system, we go with, there are different options under the file, right? So we can either go with the import STL file or import a surface file. So that is, if you have some particular geometry, okay? We can go to the, the downloads. Maybe I have uh, something good in the downloads part. Yes. So, uh, why the STL is not visible? Yeah, so you can see that there are different files here, right? So these are the different geometries that I'm having now. Okay, for, for an example, I'm just clicking on a particular file that a geometry file that I'm having. And when I click on to the import thing, I can import any particular geometry into it. So when you see this, you can see that considering the other CFT analysis here, they are all STL files, okay? Or else the, a single geometry or volume, they are divided based on the, uh, they are divided into different triangles. Okay, so in this particular case, if you see, you can see that there is a car into it and uh, Inside this, we can uh, we cannot do the CFT analysis on this because the the volume is very volume created is very poor. 
just hold a minute sorry for that actually so this is how you import a geometry into it and there is also one thing that you need to see is that every file you can see it as a, it saved as dot cvg format Okay, so the format in which the, the, the converse file is saved is in the .cvg format. And if you wanted to see what is the dimension of this particular object, you can just go here. Okay, and just clicking on this geometry bounding box, you can see that there are some values given here. So what are these values? In a Cartesian coordinates, we say that this particular box in the x direction it is 1.5 dash so usually we say that in the converse usually measures or describe the units in meters okay we can change it but usually we say that this, this is in uh, meters only we define the system so we say that this particular system it's having a length of 1.56 it's having a height of 0 0.86 and it's having a, a, a thickness of 0 0.91 meters. If you wanted to change the dimensions also, we can directly go to the repair options, not in the different transform options, then scale options. And if I just click on 0 0.001, okay? And just click on apply, you cannot see anything. But when you click on here, you can see that it has changed its unit. By this way, we can also scale down this, scale down or scale up the particular system. Okay. So this is how you import any particular uh, geometry. There is also one method of importing any geometry by using a surface.dat file. So the good part of this particular uh, converge is that you can easily do the case setup. So case setup can be easily done and also it can be easily transferred. So after we have done this, then how do we say that if the flow is internal or external? So basically there are different type of flow. The flow through a pipe, we can say it to be uh, internal flow, flow inside a pipe. But when we are understanding the flow over a car, we are understanding the aerodynamic properties of, of a car, like the, the, the drag or the lift, so it should be always a external flow. In this particular thing, we can say it. there is actually, uh, yeah, so there is actually uh, a, a car inside this particular volume, right? So this particular car, if we wanted to find how much drag is happening into this car, what do we, we, what do, we do? We usually go with uh, naming this boundary and we found out how much drag is created over it okay but the problem is actually uh, we have how do we say that if a flow is internal or external so there is particularly a thing called as normals so if you see in the left side there is a normal toggle when you click on it you can see that there are some yellow colored uh, the, the lines projecting outside these are the normals so if you see here the normals are pro projecting outside so the flow is happening over this box. But in our case, what we need, we need to find out the flow through this particular box. So if you wanted to change this particular flow from internal, uh, so the external flow over this particular box to internal, we should always make sure that we have to change this yellow colored normal in the outside direction to the in inside direction. How can we do that? So the same way we go to the transform option, click on to the normals and just click on to any particular triangle and click on apply. So now if you see here, the whole normals are projecting inside, right? So which means that the now the flow is internal flow. So now flow will happen over the particular geometry. Okay. So that is uh, regarding the thing. Also make sure that flow the 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 armad body it should be pointing outside okay so by this we can say that the flow is a uh, the uh, flow through this particular is assumed to be correctly uh, aerodynamic flow analysis but the entire case setup is done wrongly here uh, or the the geometry creation is entirely wrong i'm just showing it for your reference only okay 
so that is one part and how do we actually name this different boundaries whenever we wanted to do any particular cfd simulations we have to name some particular parts so what i would suggest you is i'll i'll go with a case setup a simple case setup and uh, i'll explain how to how we have done that okay so uh, if you this is a very uh, uh, case setup a new, a new case setup that you are doing so the very first thing that we need to do is we have to import the file what file the geometry usually we make use of this dot stl file which is very good for analysis okay so if you see here this is a particular geometry that we are having and in this particular geometry what type of analysis we are doing here we are doing a cfd analysis or flow analysis okay flow analysis means so how it happens is that the flow is going to happen over this plate and then it will uh, it, it's it's called as the backward facing step so flow will happen inside of this particular thing and then since there is a backward facing step because of the shape it is called as a backward facing step so the flow will get separated from the particular this particular point and there can be some sort of uh, a, a small recirculations can be obtained here and the backward facing step is widely used in industries for uh, testing the the cases because it there are uh, numerous uh, results available for experimental values available for this same case setup so we are taking that for the consideration so to begin with first of all we have to check what is the geometry here so it says that the geometry is 0.2 meter 270 meters in the lengthwise and there is also it is having uh, what is the normal happening so the normals there are some normals which we can't there are two normals that we can see but if we hide this selection we can see that the normals are all pointing inside or else it is actually uh, uh, the the normals are projecting correctly so that the flow uh, the, the normals uh, the flow is uh, correctly pointed okay so after we do this the very next thing that we can do here is there is an option here which is the diagnosis okay so you guess whenever we before we do the case setup make sure that there is no error happening whenever uh, uh, for a for a industry process uh, always there the geometry will be very complex and uh, we have to spend a lot of time for geometry cleanup and all and in that way also the converge is having a very good uh, capability of doing very complex uh, geometry cleanup in a uh, small time okay so if you see here there are no error happening here if i just remove if i just delete this particular part okay transform or repair delete triangle okay i'm just deleting it and if i check the diagnosis you can see that there are three open edges so there are some edges which are not closed so this is an actual error so we have to fix that error okay so whenever we are working on a cfd analysis make sure on in converge make sure that there are no error in this particular dynamics deck okay so coming to that now by any we are going to create that particular geometry and then just check it it's, it's cleared okay so the next thing is so as of now the geometry is perfectly fine now the next thing is we go to case setup so there are basically three types of uh, simulations in, in a converge there there is a time based there is a crank based ic engine and there is crank based non ic engine so this is the best part of the the converge they have specific uh, conditions and uh, setup for the ic engines okay so uh, and also the other crank based systems so it's it, it's very easy to set up case setup and also it's very easy to do the simulations okay so in the our case in this particular case setup it's uh, not a ic engine or a crank based simulation it's uh, just a general case setup of flow through a backward facing step okay so just click on done and just confirm it and in this particular simulation we can assume it to be air flowing through this okay so we assume that in this particular domain air is flowing through the particular domain 
So if we are assuming it to be an air, we go to the materials and it's good we say the mixtures that we are defining as air. Okay, and I click on apply. And uh, we don't need actually the reaction mechanisms. We can have this species also. Yes, and apply, done. So the global transport properties, I'm just go with the default value. And the species, we can say that there are, we assume that the species, we can have it to be uh, different species like O2 and N2, which constitute the air. Okay. And uh, N2. Yes. Okay. And that way we have made sure that the materials are correctly defined here. So the first thing that you need to do is first select what type of analysis, then we choose the materials. Then we assume, then we say what are the different simulation parameters, whether it is a transient cases, whether it is depending on time or whether it is just depending on the uh, cycles. Okay. So if you click on to the, after we make sure that the materials are correctly defined, we go to the simulation parameters. And in the simulation parameters, if you see, if you wanted to have a transient simulations, we make sure that the solver is set to be transient. In our case, we assume it to be a steady state solver. And there are cases like full hydrodynamic and no hydrodynamic simulations. Full hydrodynamic means the complete case setup and the no hydrodynamic simulations is also a good part of this converge where we are just running the simulations so that whether the meshes are creating correctly uh, to, or whether the, the valves are moving correctly. So we are not conducting any, any complex properties for just to test how the how good the, the valve motions or the mesh creations. Is. So basic thing for testing all these things, we can go with the no hydro. For this particular case setup, I'm go with the full hydro case setup. Okay. We can assume it to be a compressible flow and just click on okay. So they say they are asking whether to confirm it. Just click on confirm. So there are certain, uh, there's a features like steady state monitor. As the name suggests, we are uh, we have to give this steady state monitor so that it, it's like a monitor we are keeping for, to see if if the steady state is achieved. The good part is if we, uh, if if the steady state is achieved, then we can we can uh, uh, stop the simulations before the required time. Okay, we can also keep off of that. We can we can turn off that by clicking on the this particular update simulation so that way. It is done. Okay, now the next thing is simulation time parameters. So we are se selected a uh, uh, steady state simulation. So therefore, we don't we can see that it is in cycles. Okay, so uh, in this particular our analysis, we have chosen it to be time based, and uh, we assume it to be. Uh, uh, we usually give it a 15,000 iterations. We try to run it. And the best part of this is actually we are using a variable time step algorithm. That means we are starting with a initial time step, maybe of 1e power minus 9. Okay. And we start with that particular time step. And we using certain CFL criteria and other conditions, we say we change this time steps accordingly so the good part is actually we, we will get uh, uh, the best results based on the 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 uh, we'll get the best results in a short span of time and the solver will adjust the time step by itself okay so we can assume it to be one e power minus nine itself and then the maximum time step we can assume it to be one so these are the values that we should give Okay, so these are the different convex CFL limit. Based on this convection CFL limit, it will give the uh, the results. So, uh, the lo lower the convection, uh, the CFL limits, the the more will be the the results. It's good that you go with the convection C uh, the, the CFL limit less only, so that uh, you will not get any any error or uh, the the results will not blow up. Okay, 
so that is regarding the simulation time parameters i have actually clicked on to click the, the this uh, final validation earlier it should have been done after we case setup or after we run the entire case setup okay so the next thing is the solver parameters itself in this we say whether the solver is a density based or a pressure based we can go with the pressure based if you want or else we can go with the density since it is a not a very highly compressible flow and all we go with a pressure based system okay uh, so we say that okay so here also we can we have changed the cfl limit for stability so that way it's uh, showing the error now the issue is resolved so now we have to the next part is we have to name it so naming this particular case setup is also very much easy okay if you wanted to see here there are actually five case setups okay five boundaries are there what are the different boundaries i'll show you we assume that the flow is going through this particular phases so it is called as the inlet okay we name it to be inlet so just click it and one right click so it will give the options of renaming you can name it to be outlet and boundaries maybe you can say that this is a 2d case so give it to be a front and uh, this is a back 2d so front and back are 2d so whenever we want to do any 2d simulations also we go with this we give this front and back a 2d case setup and also it's the remaining surfaces are top and bottom okay so these are the different boundaries that we are having how to give the names so first select the different triangles so i said here the entire geometry is divided into different triangles triangulated surfaces okay so if you wanted to assign this particular two boundaries to be inlet just click on it and click on enter so you can see that this particular color is assigned here so it's assigned to be inlet similarly this is the outlet so we just click on to the outlet and click on enter so that part it becomes outlet and this is the front part we assume it to be front 2d assume it assign these values and also there are different options here okay if you choose by angle and click on to this particular object it will choose that particular surface as a whole because of that angle and we can assign that surface as a whole also so by choosing this particular by angle options we can choose a bulk of triangles okay so there are different methods of doing that and uh, the remaining are our top and bottom so top and bottom we try with angle so they are selecting only these two triangles we can choose these two also so if you see here these are the four total four triangles that we've chosen remaining two we selected two we chose here okay now you just click on to the top and bottom so if you see here the name selection so if you have any idea idea of giving the name selections in in, in answers fluent the similar you are assigning the boundaries to the particular geometry okay so this particular color remains the same we can change that color to some other color okay so fine so as of now we have done the give the boundaries the next thing is we have to assign the boundaries but before we assign the boundaries in a cfd analysis how it actually do is that we have to give some initial guess values to the every cell right so how is the initial guess values done so that can be done using a particular thing called as regions or else we can say that a collection of boundaries we can say to be a region which is taken for the uh, giving the initial guess values okay so first we go to the regions create a region and click on okay after we go to the regions we again go to the boundaries and say that this is the inflow and here we are having some pressure of uh, 110325 pascal fine and air is there okay and it is an inflow type because at the inlet only the flow is coming into it and at the outlet it is a outflow 
at the outflow it is going out into the atmospheric air so we assume it to be a value of atmospheric pressure okay and the front and the two they are 2d cases we assume it to be 2d so we just assign it 2d here also here also and the top and bottom we can say to be a wall if there is any moving wall we can change this to translating or rotating in our case it's just a stationary so we assume it to be a stationary wall with a uh, low of fall and all okay so you just we have uh, given this particular thing and then the next thing is we have to define the regions so without defining the regions we have defined the regions so these are the regions that we have defined just before i have told about the initialization right so these regions are created in that part okay okay yeah so so here zero normal gradient okay okay at the outlet we can assume it to be air so we have initialized it uh, or we have given uh, regions as well as boundaries which are very essentials for doing any particular cft simulations and how do we give the mesh that is the best part the mesh is given by giving the value so we can't say what will be the total number of cell but we can assume there is a thing called a cell count estimation if we say that we are giving a 0 0.004 to this particular system okay this, uh, we are trying to divide this particular system in the, the it is going to divide the entire domain in 0 0.004 or uh, four micrometers uh, we, we can say that it can have a total number of cell approximately of 1570 okay this is a good way of seeing whether the cell count is uh, good or not so we just click on to the okay that is one part so if you say that okay this is a, a flow through a backward flow seeing step and also we can assume it to be we assume the top and bottom to be wall so the wall will exert some sort of uh, force on the fluid and can cause what a, a high gradient of fluid velocity so if it is in that case if you wanted to visualize that particular area more refinedly if you wanted to give that particular area more uh, more uh, refinement on the top and the boat bottom we go there and click on to the fixed embedding and click on apply okay and we go to the fixed embedding and just say that we need to have a a fixed embedding at the top and bot and it's a permanent scale of one so if you give a six scale of one we give even the basement size to be zero point or four mm right so if it's four mm when we give a scale of one it will create a mesh of two mm at the top and bottom surface so that way we can give a good refinement if you give a two two scale here we are going to create a mesh size of one mm at that particular area so how many layers we want it we can give it since we are giving a permanent we are not uh, we have we don't have to give the start or the end time okay and there is one good part which is the adaptive mesh refinement okay maybe i'll, I'll uh, uh, say that in the in the uh, next part uh, so this is how you do the 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 case setup so uh yeah some somebody raised the hand yeah uh, properties for embedded car inside so actually that particular case setup was not uh sorry actually uh mass flow rate and pressure at the exhaust so we can we can uh how do we find the mass flow rate so there are many occupants for that uh only for failure our analysis software is used for failure conditions no i'm sorry uh, okay properties for embedded car inside yeah why because the properties were not actually the whenever we wanted to do any particular cfd analysis on a maybe on a on a mammoth body in this particular case okay we have to say that the flow is coming through this way and it's going out but there is no actually there is no the fluid there is no space for it we have to first create the geometry in a good way that the flow happens in a there should be more area for uh, 
flow to enter into it and more area in the in the rear end so that uh, flow has to go out so this is actually not a good geometry to work on that's why i'm i have not worked on it okay so the, uh, whenever we are do, doing some analysis the geometry should first be good so i have shown this just for your uh, understanding only how to do, Im import the geometry and all so now we have done the all the key setups okay so we have said that we are running the particular simulation for 15000 cycles or 15000 iterations maybe and how many outputs do we want so for that we go to the output thing and when you click on to thousand for every thousand iterations they are going to create some output okay so how is it now we are done with the case setup now how are we going to uh, run the simulation and so that is the another big part of it so we can either run through this run converge but usually in, in, in our understanding in my case of usually or our case we we first there is an option called as export okay so there is an option called as export and go to the export input files so there are some errors here we have to say that okay i'll anyway turn off this amr here apply done run parameters uh okay okay add configurations add maybe average temperature at the boundary of outlet uh, so why are we doing this not the average temperature we can assume it to be the pressure okay why are we doing it so it's it is for understanding the steady state we are understanding how much steady the flow is after different iterations if they find that okay this flow is steady for so and so iterations then we we go with this uh, the they'll stop the iterations very fast so it's for getting the most accurate results in a small amount of time okay so we go to the run parameters it's steady state okay fine now after we make sure that the case setup is completely done we go to file and export an input file okay so this is how we are going to export the, this is how we are running the simulations when you click on to the export input file we have to choose the location we wanted to key setup okay in this case i am just getting into this particular location where we are having the uh, i've created one folder called as bfs stand for backward facing step and i click on to the select folder and when i click on okay inside this bfs folder uh inside this bfs folder you can see there are different dot in as well as dot out files okay so these are the dot in files so if you open you if, if you try to open it okay just double click on it you can see it to be the files in a uh, this input data that we give there we can read it as a notepad you can read all the case setup that we've done we can read it in a notepad or other readable files okay so that is regarding whenever we are running any particular simulation first export these input files into any particular folder and usually i used to uh, import two different files here okay so that is one is the mpi exec file and the other is the converse.exe these two files are already available in the system we can import it here so if you go to this pc it's it's already in the program files we we get that files from there converts pin mpi intel pin so we get this data one file i'm using is mpi exec it's for doing the the parallel processing which which can help you and in, in getting uh the the which which can help you in running the simulations more faster and also the other is the the intel mpi and i get this converge.exe i copy this file both the this file and also the other files and paste it in the same location okay i paste it here and what i do is i open another software which is called as the sigwin 
So you have to run as administrator and we have to run the simulations using this. Now the next thing that you need to do is you nav you open this particular uh, the uh, particular sequin. You can also use other uh, other executable uh, command prompt. Okay, so then you just type cd and navigate to that particular locations. So I have already run it. Yeah. If I click here, and uh, this is the command for running the particular simulation. It is mpi exec.exe space hyphen and space to space converge.exe space restricted. We are using the restricted keyword so that all the outputs are not printed out. Your screen is frozen. Why we use this over answers? So there are certain um, we, i'm not telling that it's always superior uh, nothing like that but there are actually uh, certain cases or whenever the uh, we compared the simulation value with the experimental values in most of the ic engine cases this particular converts has provided good results and that is the reason why in the f1 teams like red bull or aston martin they are currently using this particular uh, converts for their analysis okay so uh, even though this is not much uh, much known to our country uh, this is actually very much used outside the country and uh, this is specifically used in industries where combustion or ic engines are used fine so this is the command that we use to run the simulations and just click on enter button it will run the simulations okay so it will take some time so uh, i won't be waiting until that time so we can now go to the uh, the slides okay so is my screen frozen or uh, can you can you can somebody uh, can can you see my screen or is it frozen yes we can see your screen uh, then yes yes fine thank you sir fine so i guess uh, okay so so this is the running of the particular simulations okay i i accidentally actually shared only the the screen for the converge ui so we are using a particular uh, software uh, or a or, 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 uh, command prompt uh, software called as sigwin for running the simulations we can also use also use the command prompt so first that we need to do is go to the location where we are. Can you maximize the uh, command window, uh, uh, CMD window, please, Daniel? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so you were not able to hear that, uh, sir? We are Hello? able We are able to hear you, but we are not able to see properly. It's very small, right? So if you maximize uh, the screen, yes, yes, that yes, will yes. be much better. Yeah. And if you uh, zoom a bit, uh, right, so people can read the commands. Yeah. So I guess you can see the screen. Huh? So, there you go. Yes, yes. So the thing is, the very first thing that you need to do is we have actually exported these files into some locations, right? In in our case, we have exported these files into a folder called as BFS. So in the BFS, we have exported these files. And if you see the type in this, there are different type of files. So we are exporting the files with a dot in the dot in files okay these are the files that we are exporting here when you try to double click on it we can see that that the, the different conditions that we give here so if you wanted to restart any particular simulation that we have stopped in between you just have to change this zero to one so there are different we can uh, run the simulations on half a mark also we can run the simulations in a, a, a from the beginning also so the whatever we are exporting as the input files, we can see that I see it as as uh, uh, using the notepads also. Okay, so as of now we have just done the case setup, but we have to run the simulation. For running the simulations, we are using a software called a Sigwin. This is the software. So what you need to do is we have to navigate to the location where we are having the input files. So this is the folder where I am having the input files, and 
i can type a command like this okay so the command can be mpi exec dot exe space hyphen n space two space converse dot exe space restricted so these are used so that uh, you, you if you click on enter button you can see that the simulation will be running okay yeah so uh so if you see here now the simulation is running so we are using the converge signs for uh, you can do it for uh doing the case setup or for also for uh, uh doing the geometry cleanup then um, case setup and for running the simulations i am using the sigwin so we can also make use of uh, there's a for doing the post processing we use another software called as paraview i guess many have heard of this that is the software we used for open form also for doing the paraview okay let it run by there itself but in uh, since we don't have time to visualize these things uh, i'll i'll uh, go to the slides anyway right uh, so now go, go coming to the features of converse we have missed a lot of time actually so uh, as i said these are the softwares that we are using for piece pre-processing for running the simulations we can use the sequin or uh, other not uh, command prompt or also we can use the convert studio and for post processing we are using the paraview and in my case i'm using the converse uh, 3.0.16 for doing the case setup okay so the very best feature of a, a converge we can say it to be an adaptive mesh refinement so if you see here you can see that there are certain areas where the mesh size is coarse and there are certain areas where the mesh size is fine so here the mesh is very fine here the mesh is very coarse how do we do that so converge itself is having a a a, 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 a feature okay which automatically refined the meshes based on the region so that particular option is called as adaptive mesh refinement it's very useful whenever we are doing any particular simulations so the best part is it can reduce the cell count it can give the high mesh count whenever or wherever the cell count is required that is why the adaptive mesh refinement is used i'll also show you how to do the adaptive mesh refinement in converge so if you see here in the in the converge in the grid control when we double click on it there is an option called as adaptive mesh refinement okay when we click on it and click on apply confirm and double click on it okay we are saying that at the region zero i have to give a adaptive mesh refinement so what can be the maximum number of cell that we can have based on the the cell count that you are having you can go as of now i'm going for a, a, a two lakh cells okay and then what are the condition based on what conditions we are going to refine it if i say that the condition that i'm using for refinement is pressure then what it usually does is we if the subgrid criterion okay so these are the different criterions and uh, if possible I'll, I'll share my white screen where is this one okay uh, where is the white screen if you click on share screen right daniel uh, you will get an option yes uh, ah, okay. okay yes thank you thank you sir yeah okay so this is one thing okay so what it does is actually we are finding out the curvature of any properties okay so we say that we are having some cell okay we are having different mesh like this so across this mesh we might be having some 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 properties like pressure consider we are having some pressure also p1 and p2 okay so whenever the change the d square p by dx square along this particular direction is more than the subgrid criterion okay the criterion that we are going to give here then it is going to create a adaptive mesh refinement so this particular option is called as the 
the the the adaptive mesh refinement and the condition is t square uh, phi so this phi can be p based on pressure we can do that we can also give it based on temperatures also we can use it for uh, the the velocities also there are different options for it so how do we initialize it in the, in the k setup so we say that the if the pressure the sub criterion is 2.5 we can go with the embedding layer of three. So what is embedding layer of three? So if this is particular one cell, okay, sorry, this is very uh, coarse mesh. If it is, if you are going to divide it one thing, or if you, if you can divide it into four equal parts, then the scale is equal to one. When the scale is equal to two, we can further divide a cell into four equal parts. Similarly, if a cell can be divided further into one more thing, then the scale is equal to three. So just by giving this particular option, we can say that the mesh refinement can be given on the particular area on wherever required. So this adaptive mesh refinement is very useful whenever we are working on the on the uh, convert software. So there are also other features there. Uh, so it allows to get the most, most refined grid in the areas of interest with complex phenomena. And the next thing is the fixed embedding. I have already told you. So consider that this is an IC engine. Okay, in this IC engine, this much area, I am having a very one type of mesh elements. And in the other elements, I'm having a, a coarse mesh. So why? Maybe this is the area where more, more focus has to be given more attention has to be given where the flow parameters are changing a lot. So we have to give, we can give fixed embedding there, thereby the computational resources can be limited. So understand that uh, CFD simulations always, uh, that the time is money. We need to get the best result in a short possible time. So we don't want to waste the time. So uh, we always go for uh, the getting the best result or the optimal results in a best possible uh, short time, okay? Yes, and this is the equations for uh, the, the the fixed embedding. That means uh, we are giving some base grid. So whatever be the embed value, we are going to get the cell like the cell value like this. That means if you are having a 0.8 mm as the base grid, and if you give a scale of two there, then the embed scale is two there. We can give this uh, 0.2 mm of cell can be obtained. Right, so there are different type of embedding are there. We can give a box embedding or uh, this particular is called as the cylinder embedding is their boundary embedding. So whenever we wanted to give a fixed refinement to any particular region, we can go with this fixed embedding, okay? This is also very much useful. Uh, you can easily learn this. I've told you that uh, in this particular thing, uh, particular, software we are not making use of we are not creating the mesh we are just defining what is the cell size we need or where we need what more refinement okay so in that case at the corner certain areas if the cell size may be of low value okay so the converse is having one one features which is called as the cut cell method okay uh, so so cell pairing what happens is that in this particular side, you can, you can see that, I'm sorry, uh, you can see that this particular cell and the neighboring cell is having uh, uh, the base size cell may be X value. So the neighboring cell is so low that it is less than the 30 percentage of the base value, base mesh value. If it is in that case, the neighboring cell will get attached or it will coupled with the neighboring cell. So this particular feature is also called a cell pairing where the mesh is automated generated. So the uh, the base mesh size, uh, it if the size of the cell near the particular cur curvature or at the boundaries are uh, particular, uh, if they are low value, then we can go with this, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the solver will assume and it automatically, it, it will, join with this particular neighboring cell. So this is called as cell pairing. This happens because the mesh is automatically created by the uh, by the solver itself. Okay. 
so in certain cases we have to make sure that the cell pairing has to be uh, i mean uh, it, it's not good that we get this cell pairing wherever the high mesh is uh, mesh, uh, mesh is required because it can affect the accuracy of the results and the next option uh, or, or the next feature of the converge is the super cycling in the super cycling it's actually used for a cht analysis in a cht analysis what happens the fluid there may be multiple modes of heat transfer occurring and uh, yeah only whiteboard is seen uh oops sorry yes uh, so i guess you can see the screen right yes so uh, super cycling is actually used for whenever we are having a cht analysis what is cht analysis CST analysis there are multiple modes of heat transfer occurring and in that particular cases the the flow there will be multiple solvers for the solid and the fluid solvers for a solid uh, the for finding out the heat distribution in the in, in the solid part the the solid or the fluid body will be frozen and the good part is it will give a good results in a short span of uh, time so so it is always good for doing the CHT analysis Okay, so we have time limitations. So I'm going to the things. So we have discussed all these parts. We have told what is the general layout and all these things. Now, what I can tell you is, I'll show you how the, I'll just show you an output of a, of a basic case setup that I have done. So if you see, yes, so, this is the one features of AMR, okay? So if you see here, I'm used the same backward facing step. And if you can see it, the, the subgrid criterion that value I've given was so low. That's why I cannot, we can see it. Actually, what it does is actually, it, it's create a, a, a adaptive mesh refinement in the particular area where the pressure is very less, okay? And this particular option is called as the adaptive mesh refinement and uh, and this is uh, the results I've actually obtained earlier itself because of the time limitations. So these are the case setup that we have done already. And uh, this is the inlet of both outcome and the front 2D part that you have created here. So uh, this is the base mesh value that we have created and uh, mesh refinement and the output files, okay? So we have run the case setup also, post-processing also we have learned. Uh, so yeah, one thing uh, we have missed here is the post-processing part, okay? So how do we give the post-processing? So once the simulation is run, we can go to the converge itself, okay? In the, I guess you can see the screen, right? So if you see here, there are certain files that are created here there is a scratch file and also there is an output folder so if you click on to the output folder and select the folder you can see these there are multiple files that are created okay so these are the different files of output that have generated here and if you wanted to obtain the result in any format that we desire we have to first of all give a name like uh, any name that we can give here and usually we are making use of the para view so we make use of para view and uh, just click on all and then click on the apply or convert option they have converted it into the required format so this is the good part of this this is the way you are converting the format into para view uh, version okay so then we go to the para view and then we go to the file open and just click on to the dot dot vtm file to open the file that's what we are getting it here okay so we have very limited time so uh, now we can go to the next part so uh, one more hours we have and uh, in any doubts you are having up to this part uh, 
Okay. Um, fine. I believe uh, there is no doubts to you. Okay. And uh, coming to the part two. So uh, these are the parts I wanted to. Yes. Somebody raised a hand. Uh, Daniel, you can take it forward. Uh, we will take all the questions at the end once the session is done. So, guys, sure, uh, sure. feel free to drop your questions in the chat box uh, and we will take a look at the chat box and help you out with the uh, uh, questions, okay? Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. So, uh, we are, uh, as of now, the, the, the turbulence modeling, we are not going into the turbulence modeling, actually. So, also, we are going into how to do the case setup in a PFI engine. So, if you see here, uh, uh, what is a turbulence model? So the very, I, I can explain it in, 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 in two minutes because uh, this is not actually meant in our uh, slides. So turbulence is a very complex phenomena and to capture the turbulence as a whole uh, using the CFT, we may be requiring uh, the cell size of very high refinement. So since turbulence is a very complex phenomena which cannot be obtained in, in, in uh, in a low cell count, what we usually do is we going to model the turbulence and there are different turbulence models like RANS modeling and LES modeling. And usually in the normal case setups, uh, we go with uh, the different RANS modelings and uh, like K epsilon models and K omega models are there. K epsilon model was formulated in 1974, I guess, and 20 years later, the K omega model was formulated. Okay. So uh, these are the different types of RANS models that are available in Converge. And every RANS model is having certain uh, certain advantages and they are used for certain purposes also. Okay. So we are also using the near world treatment uh, using the U plus value and the Y plus value. And uh, yes. And uh, yeah. So one another thing is the wall head wall heat transfer models so the thing is uh, there needs to be an efficient transfer of heat in the case of a combustion chamber or a engine a lot of heat is produced inside the combustion chamber and that heat we have to model such a way that the the heat is transferred from the fluid to the solid body correctly Okay, so there are different models available in the RANS, uh, in, in the, the Converse. So there's O'Rourke and Amsten, Hannah and Ritz and Engelberger. Okay, so coming to the spray modeling, which is very important whenever we are understanding the, the CFT analysis. Why it is very important? Because if you see uh, what is a spray, whenever a fuel is injected into any, any, uh, any uh, engine, the fuel is injected as a spray. So this spray can either be a gaseous spray or it can also be as a liquid spray. It can be in the liquid or the gaseous. And if you are considering the uh, spray modeling, the, the, the same thing. So here we are doing spray modeling. If you see the name, it's spray modeling. We are modeling the spray. That means it is very difficult to capture this pro, uh, sp uh, spray process very accurately. So what we do, we create a model to replicate that. That particular mathematical models is called as the, the, the spray modeling. And we use a different type of spray modeling for liquids and for gaseous fuels. Okay. So in a spray, there are different process happening. So there is actually, there are, uh, if you see in this particular image, there is going to be some fuel that is coming out. Then the fuel can be, go, it can go for primary breakup or secondary breakup. So the spray itself can can uh, 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 it it can uh, experience a lot of properties within itself. Okay, so if there is any particular uh, any disturbance happening on any particular spray models, then it can uh, cause the spray to deform itself, and that is what is called as the uh, it all has to be accounted in the spray modeling. Okay, so so if you say the cell or, or the the finite volume or, or any cell that we say it's said to be a eulerian cell center that means we are considering him a, a finite volume in the finite volume 
we are uh, we are giving a different the the particles are arranged uh, or uh, uh, this is the image for it okay so this is the particles or the spray that we can see here they are they are uh, arranged uh, as a, a one packet of similar object okay so as the name suggests uh, for gaseous spray the the converge uses a uh, eulerian solver and for liquid spray converge uses the parcels so that word has to be very uh, uh, you have to understand that so in in uh, uh, in the liquid sprays uh, there are discrete parcels using a lagrangian solvers is used and but if you see initially it might be a parcel uh, if you consider a normal spray right you can feel that uh, if you spray a normal deodorant you can at some distance you cannot feel any uh, liquids there it it vanishes into thin air why is it because when you spray it there are processes like uh, vaporization is happening as well as there are other processes that is happening along with it okay so um, at at the starting of the spray it we can assume it to be a discrete parcels but as it travels along the distance we can assume it using a eulerian solver sorry so uh, the thing is converge introduce a concept called as parcel which is nothing but a collection of drops which is uh, might be in the in the order of micrometers and all and uh, we have to solve for a different parcel and we are not uh, we are not uh, solving for a different atom or different molecules or different drop we are analyzing for different parcel to parcel okay so uh, the parcel it represents the entire spray field so if you see here uh, these are the different physical processes that a parcel can go that means a spray when it is injected into atmosphere there will be air in the atmosphere the air is going to create some sort of resistance to the uh, to this spray so these resistance can cause pro uh, the properties uh, or uh, the events like breakup there can be primary breakup if you see here this is the spray this can be uh, it can cause a primary breakup and uh, it can uh, deform into smaller shapes and the primary breakup or the primary uh, the, the the primary breakup it can go for a secondary breakup that means it can be further it can be moved into uh, smaller smaller uh, droplets so this particular thing is called as the secondary breaker and also the same parcel can experience the resistance of the air which we can see to be the drop drag and the because the fuel is injected into in the case of an ic engine the fuel is injected into uh, 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 a high temperature volume right in that particular case the temperature is so high that the parcel can also evaporate right and also this parcel can collide with the neighboring fuels also so these are the different operations that can happen in the in a parcel operations okay so these are very useful uh, whenever we are studying and this has to be studied very clearly because uh, this parcel simulations are used uh, it you, we have to choose the parcel simulations correctly whenever we wanted to learn this particular process okay so now in the parcel spray modeling maybe uh, we can say that we can choose what type how the fuel or how the parcels are going to be placed so maybe i can what i can do is i guess you can see my entire screen right yes so what i can do is uh, maybe i'll go with a full hydro simulations okay and in the spray modeling we can see that there is an option called as parcel distribution what does the parcel distribution parcel distribution means how the parcels are are arranged inside the inside the injector so in the injector it may be arranged as a cone if the parcels are evenly distributed we can say it to be the, the evenly distributed and the if the par parcels are more near the co center we can say to be more near the 
constant value. So these values we have to choose based on the experimentals. Okay. And uh, coming to the next option, so there is an option called as evaporation model. So as I said, the fuels or this ice in an IC engine, the fuels are injected into the atmosphere uh, with a high temperature. So the uh, the 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 surrounding temperatures in IC engines always be very high. So the parcel can have a, a tendency to evaporate, okay? Or it can have a tendency to go into a, a, a smaller pieces. So these can be said to be, there are two models for this. These are Frosling method or Chiang model. These models, how we are finding it. So these are based on the experiments only. So based on experimental, the experiments, these people, there are different models available. These are old models. So we say that the, the fuel can be uh, evaporated and uh, what is the source? So in our case, are making use of a, uh, ISO octane for, as the fuel, which has the property similar to that of a gasoline engine. Okay. So coming to the next part, how does the fuel uh now evaporation model so if you see here there is an option called as evaporation model right uh so in that there is an option called a source specific species source all composite pa uh, parcel species or source all base parcel species why are we doing this so uh so the thing is certain species when it gets uh consider you are having some fuel called as uh, uh c4h8 maybe i i'll i'll use my uh, uh, i'll use my whiteboard okay so consider we are having two fuels, okay? C4H8 and C14H30. These are all hydrocarbons and uh, this can be used as fuels. Okay, so if this fuel is converted into some uh, user-defined species, we can say to be CXHY, okay? Then we make use of the species specified. So it can also be the fuel, this can convert into C4H30 and also it can convert into uh, C14H13 and C4H8. The liquid evaporates and form the, the ga gaseous form. So there is no, there is, there will not be any uh, chemical reactions going to happen. Okay. There will only be uh, the phase change going to happen such are there uh, this is actually called as the, uh, the 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 all the source or what whatever be the fuel that we are giving it is converting the liquid phases into the gaseous phase such is the uh, second type of cases or the composite species and uh, there is also one more method this can give a uh, 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 cx HY or it can give CY, H, Z. So it can, whenever it give a multiple of species, then we can go for the third option. So I have shown that in the evaporation model, these are the different options. Okay. Source species, source specified species, source all composite parcels, and source all base parcel species. So in our case, we are going to use, we are uh, source all the base particles okay and now we don't give any flash boiling and there we are not also giving some some evaporations or anything and uh, there is one important feature which is called as the penetration length what do you mean by the penetration length so whenever there is some fuel that is considered that this is an injector okay the fuel is injected such that it is moving some distance in the liquid phase. So the what percentage of that liquid we have to take into account that the mass fraction of that fuel is defined in this particular 
spray, spray penetration models. Similarly, whenever the cell size of any particular, uh, we have to calculate the vapor uh, penetration length also. I will show this, the screen so that it will be very easy for you to understand. Yeah, also one more thing that we have to calculate the maximum radius for ODA droplet. If we are having some very high or very big droplet, okay, in that case, we don't, we can say that the heat is changing throughout this particular droplet. So, if we wanted to calculate the ordinary differential equations uh, for the heat conduction throughout this particular droplet, we can give that in the particular spray modeling itself. Okay. So, that is regarding the evaporation models also. And uh, these are the different, the, the, the spray penetration lengths that we are using. So, we have to give the, the liquid penetration length as well as the vapor penetration length. If you say that, if you want, so using certain uh, clear and uh, image processing, we can see that how much the spray can propagate. Okay. So af after we get this data, what we do is, if you want the 98 percentage of the total mass fractions, we, we take that entire length, okay, this particular length. We give this value as the uh, length for for uh, giving for understanding the uh, liquid penetration length. So liquid penetration length as well as the vapor penetration length are very much useful whenever we wanted to learn about the uh, whenever we wanted to learn about the uh, the fluid uh, or the, the the spray processing. Because uh, as I said in a spray there is multiple operations happening. There is going to be the fuel is going to be uh breakdown into primary secondary and vaporizations so we have to have a, a good uh, a correct vapor uh, uh, the liquid penetration length as well as the vapor penetration length for the analysis okay so these are the values that we have given which means that if here i have given a 0 0.95 which means that i have taken a 95 percentage of the total mass fraction uh, for calculating the spray penetrations Similarly, whenever a particular cell contains 0 0.001 mass fractions of the fuel, we assume that particular fuel vapor is taken for considerations. Okay, so this is how we do the, the vapor penetration length for the sprays and the liquid penetrations. So, uh, the next is the diffusivity constant. So diffusivity means the sprays. We I, as I said that the sprays are a collection of the different uh, parcels, right? So these parcels can can easily uh, diffuse into the other parcels, right? So uh, these are all uh, uh, fluid properties, and there is actually a correlation for this diffusivity constant also. For uh, for our case, we are using an iso octane. For iso octane, the converge provides the the constant for the mass diffusivity d zero and n zero, and there is also an equation for it. Okay, so that is regarding the mass diffusivity. If what it means is that it it denotes how much the fluid diffuses into the or how much this can diffuses uh, with the other parcels. Okay, so all these details must be studied in detail whenever we are doing a spray modeling. Okay, and uh, the next is the collision thing. So, uh, in a case, the spray can also collide with another spray, or a parcel can also collide with another uh, parcel. Okay, so we can, if you see here, I can open this particular spray modeling. We can see that there is actually. Hello, uh, I guess, uh, can you see the screen? Okay. So if you can see the screen, I guess, I guess you can see the screen, right? Yes. So if you see here, the there are actually different collision models. The, the spray can collide with the other sprays. So th there are different models for that also. So if, they, if you say that there is no collision, 
we assume that the spray will not collide each other so this is actually a not good case for whenever we are considering an actual cases okay mm -hmm. so uh, there are other models like oro collisions and ntc collisions in our case we are using the ntc collisions for assuming here okay so uh, so we can also choose what are the collision outcomes also and i have told that uh, i have also told that there is going to be a drop drag what do you mean by drop drag because of the air resistance the drop or the fuel or the parcel can deform itself okay so if you say that the parcel is going to deform into the spherical shape we go with the spherical drop drag if the parcel is going to deform into dynamic shapes we go with the dynamic drop drag or if we say that okay the the droplets or the parcels are not deforming we go with the no drop drag okay so the, similar to this uh, no collisions we actually may, we will not use this no drop drag for a very accurate results and these values if you have some experimentals or some some uh, values with you you can proceed with it if you don't have don't touch these values okay so coming to the next thing uh, so the next thing is the spray wall interactions so the spray or whenever the spray hits the the wall or a, a, a solid body it can have uh, it can either create a film okay that is one option or else this this particular spray can vanish i mean once the fluid or the spray hit it hit us it, it hits the solid body it vanishes so that we can use the vanish option but it is not good compared to the 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 real case setup okay this will not if, if you are choosing this vanish option it will give a wrong result so always go with the the wall film or the based on the fluid property you can also choose the the rebound or the slide whether the it, it, if, if the fluid is creating a wall film you can go with the wall film option itself or else you can go with the rebound options okay and uh, the, the the similar to that there are actually film splash models these are also the experimental uh, based on the experiment values different people have created different models mathematical models we can choose based on uh, the best so here we are making use of the orork model and coming to uh, we can go to the 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 presentation once again because uh, yeah i have said the the parcel it can it can also create collisions it can also create what uh, it it can also uh, diffuse into the other parcel if you wanted these options we can choose the corresponding options okay so there is actually an option called as collision mesh option so the thing is if you see here certain cases we are not able to see the the good results okay if you if you are turning on the the grid sensitivity then what it does is that it is going to say that a more refined meshes or more approximate results is created here when the grid sensitivity is turned on if you are not turning it on then a coarser meshes will be created here okay so that is regarding the the the, the fluid uh, the collisions or the collisions thing and as i said about the drop drag the air resistance that is offered by the the the, the resistance that the air is offering on the particular parcel we we can choose the corresponding drop drag whether it is a spherical body whether it is a dynamic drag or a, if there is no drop uh, drag also present we can choose that but it is not favorable in the in the experimental or, or uh, in any analytical solutions okay so this also we have already included like uh, what are the different wall interactions happening there right if the fluid film is uh, rebounding it hits the wall and if it rebounds we can go with the rebounding option mm -hmm. if it is creating a wall film we can go with the wall film and also if it di disappears we can choose the <clears throat> vanish option okay uh, so how will we know the type of drop drag the 
type of that is based on the fuel that we are using okay so certain fuels will be having uh, some fuel will be very adhesive and we can make use that particular fuel based on the solid body that you are also uh, using also we can choose that okay so based on the fuel as well as the solid body we can choose that options okay and uh, yeah so the coming to the next option uh, yeah different wall film models O'Rourke, Kunke and uh, there is also one more models there which I have not included here so coming to the next part which is the combustion modeling combustion model the same way as I said spray is very a uh, very complex phenomena which we cannot actually it's difficult to more uh, to 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 create the same in, in, in a computer analysis so what we do is to replicate that we are creating some model so whenever we are seeing the word here the word model we are creating or are replicating that using some mathematical equations and these mathematical equations are obtained or these mathematical formulations are obtained based on the, the experimental values. So there is going to be some experiment. Some people will be conducting some experiment. And that experiment, we compare it. We Based on that experiment, we are trying to create some models. Okay. So there are different combustion models available in, in uh, Convert software. And uh, the, the, solve, the, the model that we are using here is the Sage Detailed Chemistry Solver. It is the most accurate way to to explain about the the solver or uh, the 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 fuel that we are using there. Okay, and uh, there are it it accurately model the ignition and the laminar flame propagations, and there are also other simplified uh, models. Uh, there are there are many other uh, simplified models uh, which can give the end temperatures but uh, we we can't actually give the uh, and uh, which we can't find the the very accurate results as compared to that of sage results okay so what happens in a sage solver in a sage solver what we are doing is actually we are uh, creating a chemkin uh, we are creating the reaction mechanism in chemkin format and solves the ordinary differential equations to find the reaction rates okay so um, as as the name suggests uh, it, the combustion is a very very detailed process and to get the results for a combustion process uh, it will take a lot of time so there are actually uh, different models available here and the different models available to us we can opt for uh, some acceleration techniques to to in, to increase our time uh, to increase the the, the computational uh, uh, to, to reduce the computational time and also to get the best result in a short span of time okay so that says one one thing is the multi zone model that means we are creating some bins and it, each each bin contains a different number different cells containing a predefined value and using the memory we are going to replicate the uh, we are using the multi-zone model option so that the sage model we can effectively understand how well the combustion is happening okay so that is regarding the combustion models and uh, in and in, in in respect to the there are different the simplified combustion models also okay so these are the non premixed turbulent combustion models which are mostly used in the case of uh, diesel engines and uh, we are having also the premixed turbulent combustion models uh, uh, which might be used for the uh, the the gasoline engines so we are the, the next is how to simulate this particular thing in a in a PFI engine. So the PFI engine is the engine that we are used for for simulations. That means support fuel injection. So I'll I'll anyway open the screen and uh, open the software and show it to you since we have thirty minutes left, right? So maybe if you can see here, uh, hide all. Yes. So also we go with edges. Okay, consider that this is a pot fuel injection. Why is it said to be a pot fuel injection? 
it's said to be a port fuel because there is a port okay and this port there is actually this is the inlet port and this is the exhaust port and this is the combustion chamber i believe you all can see the screen right yes so where is the piston this particular part is the piston and this is the liner or the the space between the piston and the cylinder head we said to be the liner okay and there is said to be a head which is nothing but the cylinder head and there is a spark plug so where is the spark plug in this particular case so if we hide this selection we can see that there are certain this is the spark plug okay and uh, that is the spark plug we are having and we have given the different names for the spark plug and the spark plug electrode and the different parts and also we have created inside this we can find the the valve so this is the valve uh, top top uh, valve this is the valve angle and if we hide this we can see the valve bottom so the reason why we are choosing the valve into the different names is because the flow is we have to restrict the flow right so there is a fuel coming into the combustion chamber but every time the fuel is not injecting into the system but how is it coming it's happening in a cyclic way that means there is a time frame or there whenever the valve is open only the fuel has to in, get into the particular uh, combustion chamber right and the rest, remaining time it has to be closed so converge is having an option called as creating a disconnect triangles and what does this disconnect triangles do this disconnect triangles if you, if i can show you maybe i'll hide selection so yeah okay um okay if you can see here there is a small gap here okay so this small gap what it does is actually it is creating a sorry yeah mark fence and also here also i mark fence okay so if i wanted to uh create triangles or uh, I can go with repair patch let's see if it works So you can see that there are some spaces here, right? This is actually an empty space. What happens here actually, the converge will create a, a triangle, okay? So we don't have to create it by ourselves. In, our, in this case also, there is no triangle here. What it does is the converge will create a triangle by itself and it will disappear whenever we want it to remove. So by that way, whenever the fuel has to get into this particular thing, we are the the there is going to be a, a disconnected triangles created here, and whenever the fuel has to be injected into it, this disconnect triangle disappears. The similar to the other exhaust port also. So this based on this disconnect triangles, the the fuel is injected into the system. Okay, so there is one thing which i have not mentioned in the previous case which is called as the event what is this event event is nothing but uh, uh, these are the systems that we used to say so there is we say that between the region one or the cylinder region and the intake system two region there is going to be a valve motion and as the valve motion happens we just have to based on this valve motion the disconnect triangles is going to be created and deleted okay so similarly for the out for the exhaust part also we are going to create 
a region and uh, this between these two region based on the valve motion we are going to create and disconnect or disappear the disconnect triangles okay and that is why we assume it to be having a valve motion and also if since it is a pfi engine we assume that there are basically two different uh, this is the inlet port but we have divided the inlet port into two different parts the reason is we assume that in, through this particular side the air is going to get in and in this particular area the fuel is injected okay so there is going there should be a proper mixing of the fuel and the air should happen there and also near to this particular valve there should be a good concentration of fuel happen this is how the uh, in, in the in the normal case also it should happen so near if if i just uh, hide this particular intake port okay so we have named this pink colored part as the intake port so in this particular area only air is going to enter into it and into this part the fuel is going to be injected through this injector so this particular cone that you are seeing is is nothing but the injector through which the fuel is injected okay and this particular fuel is injected at this particular point and there are one two three four four nozzles present there so these two these four nozzles two each are going to be supplied onto the two different inlet uh, this port so this is the port so these are the different ports that we are having okay so when this fuel and the air coming to this particular port b this is port b okay these two mixes and comes into this particular area and how are we going to why are we doing that because we need to give a good fuel element near to that particular valve part that's why we are giving a, 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 a two different regions there and also we are the the reason why we are trying to give if i just hide this intake port and uh, you can see that the valve this is the single valve that we can see in a ic engines okay this is a single valve but we have divided this single valve into multiple components or else if you see here you can see that there is an intake valve top this is the yellow colored part then there is an intake valve angle which is this particular angle part and there is an intake valve bottom part which is the bottom part of the uh, of the uh, particular valve so why are we doing that so that also we are doing it so that a correct disconnect triangles has to be created because here if you see here only we have to create the disconnect triangles okay so that disconnect triangles has to be created here so we are going with the the particular different namings for the different valve also if you see here the the valve and if you redisplay it okay there is going to be a, a small change only if you hide this you can see that there is a small various the distance between the port as well as the valve should be there should be some distance between the port and the valve it should not be touching to each other okay so there should be some distance between the valve and the port and between that part we are creating the disconnect triangles the smaller the gap it is good so whenever that uh, uh, disconnect triangles are created you can see the small gap the smaller the gap the the cell size should also be very less there okay so if you wanted to give the cell size to any particular region that area should be the uh, in this valve only okay so very near to this particular valve we can give very high refinement or very near to this particular angle we can give very high refinement so that the other parts we don't have to give much refinement so the good part is actually the the computational time we can reduce it and also we wanted to uh, get the best results also so how are we going to do that so uh, coming to the next part we we in this particular simulations we actually went and uh, maybe 
set and done so here i have chosen uh, the second option which is the crank angle based ic engines and i click on done option when we do it then the, there will be another pop-up coming so we have chosen the option to be what the angle based only right so since we have chosen this particular option to be uh, the crank angle based ic engine the solver will asking you the specifications of the engine that we are having so uh, engine should always have a bore it should always have a stroke connecting rotor length and there is uh, other options like a swirl is uh, for certain uh, engine there is a swirl happening and for some other engines there can be the helical movement can be happening in the case of uh, diesel engines and all so th these things we we don't have to go in detail here so the thing is actually we when we give these options like bore stroke connecting rod length and we say that the name selections for the piston is the piston that we are going to say the liner is the liner and the head is the cylinder head when we say that the solver or the converge will automatically assign that particular area to be the head piston and the liner and the good part is so it will the solver will do uh, assumptions based on that only so this is one good part of this uh, the crank angle based ic engines and coming to the materials so if you see here uh, we are using spray where are the spray coming the sprays are coming at this particular area right so that spray it has to be coming as a parcel so the parcel we go to the predefined liquid fuels and choose the iso octane why do we choose this iso octane the iso octane is a fuel which is having the property which is close to gasoline okay so if you can see here the viscosity and the surface tension the heat of vaporization all these properties are going to be changing as a function of temperature which is more in in the case of an iso octane uh, which resembles a gasoline fuel okay so that is the we have to define a parcel and then we have to give the gas simulations why are we doing that because we have said there is going to be a lot of chemical reactions happening right the fuel combustion happens and chemical reactions happens so we have to give the thermodynamic properties of the fluids how do we give that by just clicking on to this import data from inputs dot in okay by using this options we can import the thermodynamic properties into the solver so that is how we do that and uh, the reaction mechanism as i said we are making use of a uh, what are the reaction mechanism happening in a in an iso uh, octane fuel when it re uh, reacts with air so we have to include that fuel uh, that particular material so whenever we wanted to have any particular simulations we should be having the therm dot uh, that means the thermodynamic as well as the reaction mechanism data with us okay then only uh, we should continue with the simulations so that is regarding the reaction mechanism and uh, species so if you see here the parcel the fuel is injected as parcel and uh, we we just gave some passive which are nothing but the scalars uh, which, um, uh, which which are used for identifying the uh, certain fluid flow parameters okay so as of now you don't have to learn these things and in this particular case setup we are running the simulation uh, transient cases and uh, the simulation time is starting time is minus 520 and ending time is 120 so what is the reference value here so uh the uh, just, hey Daniel, uh sorry to interrupt uh by when we are wrapping in in 10 minutes can we wrap it okay great sure. um sorry sorry i took actually some some additional times uh so here also we are giving some uh starting time and ending time yeah. and we are using a variable time step process here and uh, yeah based on this we run the simulations and the zero value is the just before the power stroke we assume it to be the zero degree so and now coming to the solver parameters we go with the density based piezo algorithm pressure velocity coupling methods and uh, 
these are the different spray modeling and the combustion modeling that we use there. And one important thing is the source file. Okay, so this source file is actually used whenever there is there should be some spark is going to be created here, right? So when we are creating some spark, that spark has to be accounted in this particular area. So that spark is created using this source or sync modeling. Okay, that particular value, we assume it to be giving us 0 0.02 joules. Uh, this is based on particular graph. Okay, so since we are running out of time, I have uh, explained of all these things. And uh, this is the case setup that we have done. So uh, this is, uh, I have explained about the uh, different case setups also. And uh, yeah, so turbulence model, we assume it to be RNGK epsilon model. And the source and the sync model, we use uh, this uh, to light the spark. So if you see here, this is the, the spark model, okay? So in order to replicate this particular profile, we are making use of the other models, okay? Then there are different processes in, in, in the case of a spark. There is a breakdown arc and the glow options, or these are the different stages here, right? So we are going with the different mesh refinements also. So as of now, we are, uh, we are uh, shorting of time actually. So what I can do is uh, maybe I'll I'll uh, wind up the 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 case setups. So I, I I actually I was planning to show you the output as video itself. Okay. So in this particular case setup, so this is the particular one of the outputs that we have obtained in this particular simulations. So the fuel is injected into this particular. Uh, our combustion chamber and this is how the parcels are going to vary okay so this is this denotes the the parcels and the dp temperatures and similar to that we are having we have also done we have obtained the the animations for the the velocity as well as the uh, other profiles also obtained and this is how the parcel is injecting into this particular chain uh, the 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 valve and as the valve opens the fuel gets introduced into the system and then it removes out of the system okay so this is regarding the uh, the uh, our velocity plot so yeah i know i have uh, crossed uh, so much of time actually so i'll, I'll uh, wind up now so maybe I think it's time to wind up this. So we have obtained this much results also. And also we can obtain the results of plot, line plots can be easily obtained using this particular options. Okay, so these are the different line plots that we can see here. So uh, yeah, so we can have the tumble ratio as well as the vorticity and uh, many, many out line plots which are used for analysis we can obtain here okay if you see the ohm emissions we can see this is the the nox that we are going to get and uh, this is the high rod suit that we are going to get during the the combustion okay so soon after this combustion happens uh, the fuel burns and it is going to create a, a good amount of fuel high suit suit is created at a value of 7.5 e power uh, minus eight okay kilograms is created at that particular uh, crank angle so yeah so i'm just winding up this particular meeting because of the time constraints and uh, sorry for taking uh, so much of time